Hi, I'm Jeremy from the First Grade Cafe, and today I'm going to be showing you how to create this disc bound art journal. So, if you're interested, keep watching. I'm going to show you how to make this disc bound journal and the nice thing about it is because it's disc bound you can take the pages out and do your artwork and put them back in if that's the way you want it or you can take it and flip the pages around to the back if you want to just work this way. It's all materials I already had at home so it was easy for me to create but I will tell you everything you need need but let's go ahead and jump down to the above view. Here we go. For the art journal, you are going to need the following items depending on how you want to do it. First one is some kind of paper. I'm using this watercolor paper. So what I did was I took it and I cut them all in half. You can make your art journal any size you want. It does not have to be this size here. This paper here is 9 by 12. So really when I cut it in half, it ends up being 6 by 9. But you can make them any size you want. You can make small little art journals, big art journals, however you want to do them. Then you're going to need something to cut it with. So I have a swing line paper cutter. That's what I'm going to be using, but you can always just use handy dandy scissors. You're going to need something to punch holes with. This one here is disc bound. So I have this IQ hole puncher and it makes the little like mushroom kind of punches. So you can use like the discs for like the Happy Planner or wherever you get them from. I think Walmart even sells them. You can get them at Hobby Lobby or uh, Staples or Office Max or wherever. Okay, so anyways. So I have that one. If you don't have one of these kind of punches, that's okay. I will tell you, it will save you a lot of time. It is going to take you a little bit longer, but you can always just use a hole punch. You're gonna need a single hole punch, something to write with, and you're gonna need a ruler. So those are your other items. If you don't wanna go this route and spend the money on them, unless you already have one, um, you can always just use one of these. And then for the cover, you're gonna need some kind of paper, like cardstock or regular paper, whatever you wanna use. You can use the watercolor paper. So you can design your own design for the front and the back. And then you're going to need a laminator. So if you have a, access to a laminator, that'd be great. If you don't, you could always just leave it the way it is. It's not gonna hurt anything. I just wanna have mine laminated, so. If you have a laminator, get your laminator out because you might need it. Oh, forgot to mention one more thing. You're going to need some kind of discs. These ones here are all Happy Planner discs, but you can also just buy these rings, like I said, at any place that sell the kind of punches that make the disc bounds, you know, Staples, Office Max, Hobby Lobby, and those kind of places. You can usually get the rings, or if you want to have an old planner, and you want to take the rings off fit, you can use those. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut my paper in half. Like I said, you can do any size you want. I will show you the measurements if you're not gonna be using the hole punch on how to do your your punches so they come out, kinda come out the right size. So if you wanted to, you can even take, divide this in half and cut it in half and you would have one that's like a small one like that size. I'm gonna go ahead and get all a bunch of these cut. I'm not sure how many I'm gonna do, but I'm just gonna start cutting and kind of see where I end up. So let's do this. So now I have them all cut out. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and use my hole punch and punch them out. And I just kind of line it up, I think, the, if I remember correctly, it lines up at the, on this one here, lined up at the letter size. And as you can see, it's pretty even from the top to the bottom, okay? So I go ahead and I just, I'm just gonna go ahead and punch all these. Now, if you do not have one of these punches, let me show you how you can do it with that one. 
I had one that I had painted on before. So I'm gonna use this one just to kind of show you guys. Like I said, it's punched over here, but ignore that part, okay? So <clears throat> you're gonna come in about a quarter of an inch and you're gonna do two marks, one on the top, one on the bottom, that are about a quarter of an inch over. Pick it up hairs. Okay. And I would use pencil so you can erase and don't do like super dark lines. I'm just using red so you guys can see it. And then you're gonna draw a light line. Right along here, just like that. So now you have a line that goes across that's a quarter of an inch in. Then line up your ruler, make a mark at a half inch from the top or the bottom, whatever end you're on. So make a mark at a half inch, then go over every inch. So there's a half inch, so then you're at an inch and a half, then you're at two and a half, then you're at three and a half, then you're at four and a half, and then again, as you can see down here, you have about a, you have a half inch left over. So it's a half inch on each side and then one inch between each mark, okay? Then you're going to take your, your single hole punch. You're gonna line up the punch right where the dot is at. Hopefully you guys can see that. So it's kind of like in the center of the dot and then you just punch it. Like that. Then you want to take your scissors and you're going to cut. It's kind of like a really, really small little sliver and cut that out. And like that. And I just cut, I don't even make sure it's even. I just like kind of go in the center, like and just punch on each side. There you go, like that. And then you can just slide your rings under each one. So let me go ahead and since I have the whole punch, like I said, this works. It's gonna take you a long time. So if you really wanted to, you can set up maybe a couple pages on yours. And then as you do new ones, you can add them to your journal after you paint on them. So then you can add them afterwards. So, but I'm gonna go ahead and start punching all mine. I'm gonna set that to the side because I don't want to get that one confused. But the ones that I have, there's one I've already done. saw how hard that was to punch through. <laughs> this paper is pretty thick. I mean, I don't know what the thickness is. It's a 140 pound paper, so it's pretty, it's, it's thick. And I believe the ones that you get from like Staples, whatever the tool brand or Martha Stewart or something like that. I think one of my papers is going the wrong way. <clears throat> Those ones there will punch through thicker. So now we're gonna put our rings on. I'm gonna use these silver ones for mine, but you can use any color you want. So you can get your rings in different sizes. As you can see here, there's three different sizes right here. So depending on what you need. I think for this one here, I think these ones are gonna work really well because as you use the paper, it's gonna swell up a little bit. And so I think it'll be fine. And once I add my covers on, I'll think it'll be okay. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through and add all my rings on now. And this part takes forever.
All right, so the next step, I got them all done. So I'll show you guys what it looks like. So there's your thing all put together. So I have all the rings on. It does take a little bit of time to get the rings on. I will be honest about that, but like once you have them on, they're on, so. And yes, they are a little bigger. But like I said, I can always, once you're adding your materials to your journal, then you will have, you have more space. So my way to use a step down, they would have been way too tight. So yes, they seem a little loose, but once I get the covers on and you start filling up your journal, you won't even notice it. So now I'm gonna work on the cover. And what I did was I went ahead and just cut the papers down to six by nine. And the reason I did the same size as the planner pages is because there's going to be a little bit of a lip going around of the laminate. So the laminate, is that how you call it? The lamination, I don't know what you call it, the plastic piece that goes from the lamination. And so you'll have that. So I have one for the front, one for the back. I did use cardstock this time, just so it's a little thinner because when you laminate it, if you use lamination, like um, I think mine is three mil lamination. And so it's a little thicker. And so I'm just afraid that it wouldn't punch through when I go to punch it. So we're gonna, I went with a little thinner, but the lamination will thicken it up some. So now you, that was the fun part. Like now you get to decorate your covers. So I'm gonna go ahead and decorate my cover and I just threw some stamps and stuff, and <laughs> this is the front. I actually really like the front, I think it went pretty cool. And then this is the back, the back's not that great, but I was just like making a mess all over with stamps and stuff, I was just playing around. And so it's the back. You won't even really see it, so, oh well. So, but that's the back, that's the front. So now I just gotta laminate them. So let me go ahead and get that going. So I got them all cut, are all laminated. So now I'm just gonna cut around them. I'm not really a big fan of No, I'm seeing this. I'm like, this is really cute. Not so much. Let's get back. Uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead and cut around the edges. You know what? Maybe I'll use my cutter. So if I cut around the edges, And it does keep this little like, there's like a little pocket of air. I don't know if you guys can see it. It doesn't seal all the way. So I'm just kind of cutting, a, like not cutting on that and cutting around it. So that way the paper doesn't peel apart. All right, looks pretty good. All right. There's your art journal, all ready to go.